the if garbage goes in, garbage comes out, and the behavior that we output will be bad and will contribute to deteriorating conditions on a mass scale in our world. Similarly, like a computer, the behavior of a human being will largely depend upon its programming the, or it, the quality of information that is input into the being, which will enable it to process and create efficiently if it's good. So if good information slash programming goes in, the good result comes out on the other side. If garbage programming goes into the being, garbage result comes out on the other side. When we take this into the aggregate, that's the consequential results that we get societally, worldwide, and that's what natural law actually is. It, it, this isn't difficult to figure out for people who step back from their garbage programmed conditioned response belief systems given to them by religion and whatever ideology somebody else has tried to program into their mind and you sit and think about it properly for a long period of time that you can't really come to any other logical conclusion than that if you're honest. If you want to lie to yourself, you keep telling yourself somebody comes in inherently good, somebody comes in inherently bad. It's all complete garbage BS, but if you want to lie to yourself and tell yourself that, you feel free to go right ahead and keep lying to yourself. You're not doing anybody else a disservice but yourself, but then you do do a disservice by teaching garbage beliefs to others that aren't true. And unfortunately, that's what has happened in our world. This is a very important dynamic to understand because if people don't change their view of human nature, they stay in the satanic mindset. This is exactly what will help get you out of not only a satanic mindset, but a religious mindset. Most people in the satanic mindset believe human nature is bad or flawed from its inception, and even religionists think that. And people in a New Agey or you know other t type of religious mindset will often think, oh no, people are all just inherently good. Neither is true. They are both dangerous mental subscriptions to subscribe to because they don't accurately describe what the human condition really is. The human condition is a programmable state that is capable of being changed through information. When you understand that, then you'll understand how important putting correct information out into the world is. You'll, you'll make a one-to-one -one correlation between those things, and that's a huge part of the true awakening process. Again, the negative belief in human nature, believing that humans are just bad and need to be controlled, is another defining hallmark characteristic of the psychology of de facto Satanists. Because then the next thing that they'll want to do is they want to put an authority, an authority system in place. The belief in authority, the belief in a hierarchical master-slave relationship in our world. Or in other words, a, a command structure, a power structure. And really what it is, is it's a chain of command and obedience. That's what it really is. It's people who blindly believe in authority and obey authority. And that's the thing that has led to the most death and destruction in the history of our species. And this is where the satanic the, the de facto satanic mindset is designed by the higher level Satanists to lead us. They're giving us their beliefs, their false belief system at a lower level so that we will believe all the things that will allow them to create that power structure and ultimately enslave us. It's genius from their perspective. From the chess master perspective, it is a genius strategy. From the perspective of the people being ruled, you, unless you wake up to it, you're not going to understand how it works. I'm trying, I've been for 15 years trying to give people the playbook here, folks. From, the, from an insider perspective, not from somebody who read about it in books, not from somebody who listened to other people to understand it. No, I was inside that structure at a higher level than most people will ever see. I'm trying to give you the enemy playbook, you know, Right, taken right from their whole sphere of influence and brought over to the other side of the playing field. Here's the plays they're, they're running. Here's their strategy. This is their agenda. And still, people just aren't intelligent enough, unfortunately, to figure it out. 
And then they want to come down on the person who's trying to tell them the truth about how you've been played, how you've been fooled, how you've been manipulated. These people look at you like a joke believing in their authority. They look at you like a tool. And all, all the people doing their bidding, the order followers, they look at you with nothing but contempt and they're using you like a tool. And when they're done using you like the tool that you are, they're going to throw you in a garbage dump. And that's exactly how they see you, boys and girls. Exactly. Exactly. All the little children out there who are doing these evil psychopaths bidding. All the police, the military, all the people in government. All the people who are the order followers. You know, you're a joke to your masters. You think you're involved in the power structure truly? You'll get thrown under the bus at the earliest, at their earliest inconvenience. At the most convenient time that they can throw you under the bus when they're having a hard time, you're going right under the bus, little child. That's exactly how they see you and that's what they're going to do to you. And, and history will tell you the truth of that lesson if you really pay attention to it. But most people are too stupid and ignorant to study a long view of human history. That's part of the problem. You know, if they did, they would see exactly how this power structure eats them. And when they're done eating what they want and chewing them up, they'll spit, they're going to spit your bones out. That's how it really works. That's how ruthless the people at the higher levels really are. You ain't going to escape that. You think you're going to be the last ones fed to the big beast as if that's some kind of a winning situation. Yeah. Keep thinking that way and see where it gets you. Okay, but this is a huge part of de facto Satanism. So everybody that believes in this authoritative power structure and this hierarchical power structure, you're all Satanists. You are Satanists at the core of your belief system because you don't truly believe in freedom and you've bought falsely the notion that all, all of humanity is, is bad. No, we've been given bad information. G being given access to the correct information, we can make properly informed decisions about how we will behave. We are conditioned to act in the ways that we act. That is not natural behavior. It is programmed behavior. And we were programmed at an earlier stage of our development in our lives in the formative years. And it's very difficult to break that conditioning. It can be done with a lot of work and with a lot of knowledge. And that knowledge, most people don't have it. They have not acquired it, let alone put it into practice in their lives. Another defining characteristic and hallmark of de facto Satanism is not even giving a damn, not caring about freedom in the presence of tyranny. You'll just watch tyrants destroy freedom, not say a word, not even look at it, not care, not, not speak against it. <clears throat> a huge hallmark of de facto Satanism is staying blind, deaf, and silent regarding the activity of tyrants in our world because it's cowardice. Deep down inside, de facto Satanism does not truly create and inspire courage. It's all about being a coward, acting only in your own little egocentric self-interest and never doing anything to put yourself at possible risk because these people are in fact dangerous and violent and should not be allowed to do what they're doing totally unchallenged. But only the courageous person is going to speak out against them. The de facto Satanist is going to sit back, hide, hide in the shadows, cower in fear, let them do whatever they do. Because they're a coward deep down inside their heart. De facto Satanists have been well trained only to care about their own comfort. And not to speak out against or even recognize injustices that are done to others. This is cowardice to the ultimate degree. Cowardice to the ultimate degree. It is also one of the highest forms of immoral behavior because it completely ignores the destruction of justice and freedom. And, you know, there, there's no worse crime against humanity to sit back while tyranny is enacted and say, I don't care. I, it's not actively in the moment being done to my physical body and if it's done to other people somewhere else or at another time, I couldn't give a damn. And... Be honest. See, part of this program, part of this whole presentation is I'm not only laying out the facts, I'm asking you to ask these questions to yourself and be honest when you answer them. How many people think like this compared to how many don't? If you're honest, almost everyone, percentage-wise, 
really deeply does not give a damn about human freedom to the extent that they're actively involved in trying to reverse the current trend toward tyranny. It's not about what you say you want. It's about what you're doing. See, that's the difference. If you're not doing anything, you don't care enough. You know, it's not just about you paying lip service to freedom. Another characteristic is just always doing what's easy instead of what's truly right. Most people don't have the fortitude, the courage, the willpower to truly do what is right. De facto Satanists in our world always strive to take the easy way out of just about any situation you could imagine. If that means doing the wrong thing, just not to be hassled or ridiculed, toward themselves even, or others, then they choose the wrong thing. Whatever's the most comfortable path, they're going to take it. They, they don't give any question or any care to what is morally right. And this describes most people. Doing what is right is not always what is easy. Admittedly. In fact, it is almost always the harder thing to do in life, doing what is right. And again, that's where I began this presentation. Choose the right thing and do the right thing because it's the right thing. Not for any personal reward, simply because it is the morally right thing to do. That's the consciousness we have to work toward and to actually step into and live in the world. Most people are not doing that. They're still in, always concerned about their selfish situation. De facto Satanists have been conditioned into this form of spiritual and mental weakness and cowardice. Not only do they take the so-called easy way out all the time, but they also try to influence other people, especially their own children, to make the same immoral decisions and the same immoral choices that they have made in life. And if we're honest with ourselves, and we ask ourselves how many people are like that versus how many people are not, you'll get the correct answer regarding how many people are truly good in the world. How many truly good people people exist in the, on this planet at this time, and what our work is to do to change human consciousness so that people can actually build themselves into truly good people. That's the whole goal here, folks. The what's in it for me mindset defines de facto Satanism. Above all else, this is what defines it. De facto, Satanists almost never think about doing something because it is the morally correct thing to do, but only think about whatever behavior they're going to decide upon in terms of what's in it for me. Is it safe? Is it, am I going to profit? Does it put me at an inconvenience? Etc. That's the, sa the de facto Satanic mindset. This kind of purely selfish thought is what has turned our entire society into a self-centered dog-eat-dog culture. First principles and moral correctness should always be the factors that guide our behavior instead of purely selfish reward. This is one of the primary reasons so few people even speak out against the rampant evil that is at work in our world. They don't want to inconvenience themselves. They're cowards. It's, it's not expedient for them. They don't see what's in it for them. They don't see the immediate gratification, sensate reward. They never think in the long term, only in the short term, self-centered, self-gratifying way. And that's not going to get it done, folks. You know, we have to come out of that satanic form of thought. That's not higher consciousness. That's debased, degraded, satanic consciousness and mindset. That's what de facto Satanism ultimately is. So I'm going to conclude the presentation with a few slides about getting out of this mindset. Because I don't want to leave people with abject hopelessness. That's never my intent, folks. You know, uh, a lot of people think I'm some doomer. And I am not. I'm a realist. I'm not a wild-eyed optimist seeing the world through rose-colored glasses. But I'm not a total doomer black pill person either, okay? I tell people you got to reject the black pill and you got to get to the gold pill, 
right? Yeah, take the red pill first for the information, but get the gold pill about your what your actions should really be and how what, what mindset to put your mind really in. And I'm not saying go and say everybody's angelic and uh, this is just in the hands of God or it's all going to just work out. No, evil can win. I, I repeat this over and over again. Be realistic. Evil is winning, and evil can win permanently. And tyranny can be enacted, and tyranny can reign for thousands of years. And if you want to leave that kind of a, a, a world to your children, then, you know, go and think whatever the hell you want, and, you know, not really strive to learn what the truth of the matter is. You know, and keep staying in your satanic mindset. But if you want to change the, the result, the manifestation for not only ourselves, but for those who come after us in this world, our children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, etc., our future progeny, then you have to understand the mindset that has to be formed to get out of de facto Satanism. And it's not easy. We have, Again, we've been inculcated into this religious mindset since we were young. You know, th this religion has existed for aeons, for thousands and thousands of years before any of us were ever born. To get out of it is going to be a challenge. So I want to leave people with, it is possible. Is it hard? Exceptionally hard. Can it be done? Yes, it can. With enough willpower, with enough knowledge, care, and will. It can be done, and people can reverse this mindset and come out of it. I did it. It took enormous shadow work upon myself for years of my life. Not weeks, not months, but years. Okay? And that's why it's very important that people understand this and begin immediately if they're going to ever reverse that condition. And the first thing is you have to at least care about yourself enough to even start that process. True, the true human awakening process always begins with the development of true self respect. You have to care about yourself enough to want to come out of the mindset that gets you to care only about yourself. See, because that, that's the thing. It's false. It isn't really caring about the self. It's caring about the ego's desires, which have to be eventually not 100% buried forever. They have to be put in their proper place. This is what real spirituality and shadow work strives to help the individual to do. There's always going to be an ego. There's always going to be worldly desires. There's always going to be some level of selfishness at work in the world. It, the goal is not to try to be so perfect and saintly that you look at it as an impossible condition to reach to enlighten yourself and choose something different for yourself and the world. This is a very practical way of looking at becoming truly spiritual and enlightened. And it starts with true self-respect. And to understand this process, through the beginning of it, I can't explain it all here, right? I'm giving you the very building blocks of getting out of this mindset. You have to first simply understand what respect truly is. And respect is this. It comes from the Latin, the etymological root of the word respect is the Latin prefix re, meaning to look at, to examine, to see, and the Latin um, verb spectare, which means to, to look at. I'm sorry, re means again. I was stepped ahead of myself. The Latin prefix re means again, or to do over. Okay, and then the Latin verb spectare, meaning to look at, to see, to examine. True self-respect means that we re-examine ourselves. We take another look at our own mindset, our own worldview, our own beliefs, our own behaviors. And then in light of seeing ourselves in a different way through that process of self-re-examination or shadow work, then we willfully decide to make changes about the things that we know are shortcomings in ourselves and that we do not like about ourselves. We're honest with that. We, we don't we don't try to push that off to the side and say, oh, only good vibes. Okay? No. You look honestly at what is falls short. You look honestly at what really does need to be improved. And then you willfully decide to change those things by an act of your will. And in doing so, you are then able to recreate who you are and how you think and how you behave in the world. That contributes in the collective, in the aggregate, of human behavior, and that is how the world is improved. 
by the individual changing themselves and their behavior that contributes to the collective change in human consciousness and behavior. And that starts with self-respect. It then has to move into the realm of courage to take action, an internal quality within the self that one cannot get from someone else. This has to be built like building a muscle by training, by going to the gym, by doing physical activity. Courage is built like a muscle is built. And, you know, it can weaken if it is not practiced and used. We have to find the courage to sacrifice for human freedom, to get out of our comfort zone. And that's very uncomfortable. We have to become comfortable in discomfort, in how other people may see us. Become, exercise courage to speak out to others. Exercise courage to even face the truth and look at it and answer all the questions that I ask people to pose to themselves in a very honest capacity. That's going to require tremendous personal courage and that's no short order task. That's a very tall task. And again, that starts with self-respect, and then courage will come as we do it more, as we engage in these dynamics more in our lives. And then finally, we have to actually activate the will. That's the external aspect of courage. You know, and you got to care enough to do all of this. This all ultimately stems from changing your heart intelligence. You know, the mind intelligence is going to ultimately be driven by what you care about. And then you're going to go out and get the information that you need to make the changes that you need to make internally and then help to inspire externally. This is what real love is, folks. It's not a wishy-washy notion of romantic love. That's not to say that there's not a place for, you know, romantic love, brotherly love, etc., familial love, wonderful things in life to experience. But we need to find and activate a higher love what is called agape in different occult traditions. A new view of love must emerge in our world. This is what true right action ultimately expresses, that we cared enough to act in the, in the morally right capacity. This new view of love must emerge in our world in order for human beings to leave the state of consciousness that I have referred to during the course of this presentation as de facto Satanism. One must find this higher love within oneself in the form of caring enough to take right action in the world. This means getting involved in the spiritual war that is before us, before our very eyes. Yourself, getting involved yourself by first improving yourself and then by speaking out to help others become enlightened so that they may then improve themselves as well. And that is how this chain of improvement continues on and on in the aggregate of humanity. By improving ourselves and then helping to inspire others. That is how we do it at, a, at an individual level and then it expands out to an aggregate or collective level. And that, doing that process of awakening the self out of this mindset of de facto Satanism and then helping to explain this to others and teach others and inspire others is the true activation of the will for the purposes of performing that great work of help, helping to elevate human consciousness out of de facto Satanism and the condition of human slavery. I'm going to close the presentation the way I began it at the beginning in the caveat section, with a quote from Immanuel Kant, do the right thing because it is right. Put the earthly or physical reward off to the side. Even the um, self-enlightened goal, the, the, the you know, uh, selfish, uh, enlightened self-interest, one might call it, put all of that reward off to the side and simply look at what the morally correct thing is to do and choose it for that reason because it is morally true, correct, and right. Morality means doing what is right regardless of what you are told or regardless of how many other people are doing it. Obedience means doing what you're told regardless of what is right and just because everybody else may be doing it. That's what we have to properly understand to begin the process of coming out of de facto Satanism. 
And I'll leave you on that note. Do the right thing simply because it is the right thing to do. That is how the great work ultimately begins and what will ultimately drive it to a positive end. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your kind attention during this presentation.